Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today as we head up to Minneapolis, Minnesota, the home of our next guest. In the Nike hot seat today goes Michael Fessler. He is the author of a new book called The Wrestler. It's actually been out for a a bit now, but uh, we've been wanting to talk about this book for quite some time. It's about the life and passions of a wrestler, the life of passion and the pursuit of greatness. You'll find it on Amazon. He joins us now. Michael, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Let's talk about your book because I found it to be endearing. I found it to be uh, just incredibly honest, and uh, th- there has to there has to have been a, a feeling of, well, a cathartic feeling in writing this book, at least in letting it all get out and on paper. And I found you did it in such a way where I was intrigued to go through the book and then go through the book, if you understand what I'm saying. There are parts of it that just absolutely stood out for me. Talk about the process of writing this book. Yeah, well, um, it came at a moment of inspiration for me. Um, I I really wanted to put down my, my thoughts about the sport. I had been writing about it a little bit on MissouriWrestling.com. I have a wrestling blog there that I've been doing since last year. Um, in my in my thoughts and ideas, it's been circulating throughout the internet, uh, and I wanted to do more. Uh, I had mentioned to uh, there's going to be an article coming out on Intermat uh, Wrestle.com, and when I was talking to uh, Mark Palmer, who's putting together that article, I mentioned to him that as I was writing it, it was it was almost like I was talking to myself uh, back when I was you know 14 15 years old and I I just didn't have the type of perspective that I have now and that I communicate into the in the book it, it was it was almost like I was writing to my young self something that I wish I would have understood about the sport um, I, I wish I had a certain level of maturity and and looking at the sport and what I could gain from it uh, and one of the things, and I open it up in the very first chapter, is it's not about you. And, and that was... And, and I really want to get into that because it takes, it could take a lifetime for some. Uh, for you, it came through in a moment of absolute brilliance when you discovered it isn't all about me or you. It's it's about the sport, right? That's right. Where, where, who, who, who led you to that? Where, where did that moment of brilliance or that uh, illumination come from? It came from introspection. Uh, when I was looking back on my wrestling career, uh, when I looked at, looked at it as well as a spectator, uh, watching these uh, phenoms just come up out of nowhere and accomplish great things in the sport, and then they go on, and once the sport, once their time in the sport is over, there's life. And, and oftentimes it's something that really popped in my mind was uh, you look at all these national people who have accomplished all American status, national championships, uh, even world and, and Olympic championships. Um, it's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's fantastic to, to pursue those things. But eventually um, you realize at some point, you know, it's, it's really not about me. Um, and for me, every wrestler at some point kind of wrestles with that process. There, it's an individual sport, so it's very, very hard not to think about the idea that the sport is all about me and what I can accomplish. Uh, it's a very hard thing to swallow, and that's something that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted it to be the very first chapter because it, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the book. We have to settle this and get rid of this notion that it's all about me and what I can accomplish. But there's actually much, much more to it. Didn't Will, more- didn't, didn't William Shakespeare uh, have a quote that, that went something like, all the world's a stage and, and we are merely but players? Does, is that, uh, does that kind of sum it up? To a degree. Um, the sport of wrestling is more than just the individual player, the individual person. Um, there's so much that can be gained from the sport. Uh, I mentioned that obviously uh, when it comes to other sports, people can garner important life lessons and experiences through it. But there's something very, very unique 
about the sport of wrestling and what it offers. And the goal is to help help wrestlers, help coaches, help fans and parents of the sport uh, really understand what those things are. And I hope I did a good job throughout the book of showing those things. And maybe we'll be talking about some of those things very shortly. The Wrestler is a book uh, by Michael Fessler. It's available on Amazon, A Life of Passion and the Pursuit of Greatness. That's what we're talking about this morning. And uh, our guest in the Nike Hot Seat is the author, Michael Fessler. It's uh, Banyan Press, by the way. It's dedicated. You dedicated the book to the wrestling community. Why? Uh, it's it's my way of giving back to a community that gave them that to me. Um, it's, it's a part, and I mentioned the wrestling community in one of the chapters or aspects of the wrestling community. Uh, we maybe don't recognize it as competitors when we're doing it, how important this community is um, as a part of building you as a competitor, as a human being. Um, and I didn't, I ended my wrestling career very early because I didn't have this sort of perspective that I had in this book. The idea, as we had talked about, that, that it was all about me, well, I wasn't experiencing the sort of success that I wanted to once I reached the Division One college level. It wasn't happening for me. And so my perspective being it's all about me really started to drain me and how I approached the sport. And I didn't, it wasn't doing for me what I wanted it to. So I ended my wrestling career. And because of that, I never got to realize my potential. I never got to experience all I could in the sport when I was an athlete. Um, and so I wanted to be able to give back to the sport. I can't do it as a wrestling competitor, but maybe I can do it in the writing and the ideas that I provide. And it's my way of giving back to that wrestling community, giving these ideas, these thoughts uh, to the wrestling community to, to wrestle with themselves. Let's talk about Gary Mayab, uh, if, if you would, please uh, talk to me about who he is to you. Yeah, he was my wrestling coach uh, my freshman year in high school. I wrestled at Oak Park High School, and that's where he was at the time. Um, very influential. He's one of the very first coaches to really come alongside me as a, as a competitor, even before I stepped foot uh, on the mat in high school as a freshman. He, he, he saw the potential I had, uh, and he, he wanted to inspire me. So I mentioned in the book, in one of the chapters, that when I was in eighth grade, uh, the plan was I was going to go to Oak Park. I was going to wrestle for Coach Mayab. And so he brought me with, uh, to the Olympic trials back in, uh, 2000. And all the while, when I'm watching, um, these heroes of mine, wrestle and compete against each other in order to represent the United States. Um, every time we'd watch those guys, he said, Mike, this is, this is something that you can do. This is something that you can do. You can, you can chase after these goals, these dreams. And it starts when you come into my wrestling room as a freshman and start training and competing. What you do as a freshman in high school really sets the tone for the rest of your future in the sport. You need to give it all you got. You need to dream big. You need to work hard for those goals. Um, he was the first one to really come alongside me and really set that picture up. Um, you know, I've heard other wrestlers that Coach Mayab has coached uh, reflect upon their time with him and uh, where they were, weren't even perhaps even looking for it. He provided inspiration. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. He was... He was very good at um, coming alongside wrestlers, inspiring them, help, helping them to see what might uh, lie ahead of them, uh, what goals and dreams they could aspire to. It's interesting. I think one of the things that I've highlighted in the book that um, the lessons that Coach taught you uh, really go beyond the sport itself, and I'm quoting here, their life lessons, practical and wise, uh, and once put into uh, once put into practice, because that's what wrestling is to me. It is a uh, just a it's it's moments in time that can be applied if 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 you use it as a learning experience. Uh, 
each match, each practice. If you use those as learning experiences, you can apply them to various aspects of life and, uh, and really draw true value from the sport, your competition days, and uh, all the practices. Am I correct in that assumption? That is, that is correct, yes. It's almost when you're experiencing that time in the wrestling season, you're training, you're working hard, you're striving for goals. It's kind of like a mini life. You're you're getting to experience that um, that struggle, that that inspiration, striving after those things. You get to experience in a little mini life, um, and um, you, you know when you when you go and, and pursue things in life, um, the struggle looks a little different. Uh, with wrestling, you actually get to. It's almost like a metaphor for life. You're you're physically struggling with another person, another person that's keeping you from achieving those goals. Let's talk about being a two-state wrestler in your young years, because we'll draw this to a, a, an obvious conclusion. But uh, one time Missouri State champ, one time Minnesota State champ. You had a couple, what third place finishes in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, when leaving Oak Park and Coach Mayab, that was your first sense of loss, wasn't it? It was, yeah. A lot of it was out of my control. I was just a 16-year-old boy. Uh, we had some family issues going on as well as a, uh, a move related to my dad's job. And uh, it, it was kind of out of my control, and I just kind of went along with it, and I, I lost. Um that coach that we had talked about earlier that had really come alongside me, inspired me, and uh, was really um, helping me connect what I was doing on the wrestling mat into what I what I would be doing later in life, working hard and striving for goals and dreams. So a view of oneself, obviously that changed for you when leaving Missouri, going to Minnesota. Uh, you didn't have the immediate... Uh, impact at Apple Valley where you ended up uh, and you questioned yourself, your self-worth uh, and and really your attitude changed. How did it change between your junior and senior year? Well, as we had talked about, I, I came to uh, Minnesota as a state champion, as a freshman, um, and I viewed the sport as about me, about wins, about losses, about uh, the accolades that I could accomplish. And I went in, and my sophomore year in Minnesota, I lose and take third in the state tournament. Uh, I go back the next year, I lose, I take third in the state tournament. And so when the sport is all about you and all about accomplishments, accolades, wins, um, and you're not getting that, when you end up with a third place finish, when what you wanted was that accolade, that state championship, your attitude completely changes because it's all about you. It's all about you and what you can accomplish. And when you're not doing that, uh, you're not getting from the sport which you you thought you're supposed to get. If and that's it, how my attitude changed. If one could take um, one award off the wall, um, you know these these banners or trophies uh, that we collect through our careers, uh, whether as an athlete or in business or what have you, uh, and replace it. Uh, I would replace it with uh, humility, uh, and I'll tell you why, and, and I'll see if you agree with me. The, the greatest of the greats have an apparent humility about them, and it's, in, it's actually enjoyable to talk to the greats that have, and, and sometimes the not-so-greats, but the idea is that humility is the one thing missing in each one of the awards. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Why is um, why 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 do we as coaches um, why do we miss that opportunity to teach that? I think coaches, unfortunately, um, a lot of them get caught up in the same mentality that it is about the accolades, that it is about the wins, uh, and that's transferred to the athlete who really already assumed that position. A lot of them. Um, but, you know, there are fantastic coaches um, that have gained that perspective as an athlete. On the other side of it, they're no longer competing in the face 
able to look back and say, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really about the loss, the, the wins or the losses, the championships. Uh, it's about building these wrestlers as human beings in life and how they, how they will approach it. Uh, we're talking with the author, Michael Fessler. Perhaps you've read some of his blog in the Missouri Wrestler, uh, or excuse me, Missouri Wrestling. Uh, seen his work or having uh, been online on Facebook, uh, very active in the community. Uh, and again, the book is called The Wrestler, and you look for it on Amazon.com. If there were mentors in your life, and I know there are, okay, uh, and have been, um, who are they? Uh, you mentioned Gary Mayab still has had a mentor-type uh, effect on me. I mentioned also um, in the mentorship, uh, mentor chapter in the book, um, there was a person for a very brief time that was a mentor to me. Ricky Williams um, really came alongside me as well, uh, helped me improve in the sport. Although, unfortunately, at the time, I wasn't mature enough to really appreciate uh, what he was doing for me. Um, but I also, I, I look to some people I really haven't even met that um, have accomplished a lot of things in the sport and maintain that disposition of humility. Um, for example, uh, Kale Sanderson, we, everybody can uh, see what he accomplished in the sport, the amazing things that he accomplished. But the amazing thing about Kale Sanderson is, is he's always had this disposition of humility and that's what comes off uh, with him. And that's what really encourages people is that, not just he that he accomplished great things for the sport. He was humble while doing it. He's humbled, I think, by a lot of things. And um, one of them is a strong faith. Um, I believe he knows it's not about him. It's about his faith. You seem to have addressed that, uh, and you do in the book, but uh, you seem to have been able to wrap your arms around that as well. Uh, there are many who have endorsed this book, including Nick Perler. A lot of we have common friends for sure. Danny Russell, uh, yeah. somebody I look up to every day. Uh, again, Nick Perler, Chuck Yagla. Uh, you're you're not just a writer of this book. You've you've also written before, but primarily about faith. When when did uh, you come to the understanding that faith is everything? Well, I've been a, a Christian for since I was six years old, which was around the same time I stepped foot on the mat. Um, but when it really um, took the lead in my life uh, was later on, after my wrestling career, actually. Uh, and honestly, in my previous book, I talk about it, but... That was an influential factor as well in looking at the sport, and that it that it, it wasn't about me. Um, the thing about the wrestler, though, the book, uh, the newest book, is that my hope is that maybe you don't have a faith base uh, to see that it's not about you, um, and you don't need to in order to to gain some wisdom from the book, some practical things from the book. Um, there's a way that you can see that it's not about you, um, that it's about contributing and helping grow the sport um, and about the journey yourself mm. that in growing as a human being. Uh, and I hope I can, people can see that in this book, uh, whether they have a faith base or not. I wish you would write a book like this every day because I could read your work over and over and over again. I, uh, I love it. Uh, the epilogue... Mm, I don't even I don't even want to call it an epilogue because that signifies an end, okay, <laughs> by its very definition. Um, but underneath the word epilogue, there's a paragraph, and then in in bold uh, type and larger type, it said, "If I could do it all over again, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently?" Why well, I'll outline it in that, and uh, something we didn't, I failed to mention was uh, I included that little poetic piece, if I could do it all over again. Um, that became an inspirational little write-up for this book as well. Um, if I could do it all over again, I would recognize that it really isn't about me, and I would engage the sport with, with more passion and drive uh, than ever before. I wouldn't fear 
great opponents. I would want to compete with them. I would want to take it to them. Uh, I would want to beat them. I would want to uh, train hard. I would want to gain the knowledge and experience uh, that others who came into my life could provide me to be a better athlete, to be a better wrestler. Um, I would thank, I would be grateful for the opportunity to wrestle. Uh, every single time I strapped on a pair of wrestling shoes and stepped on that mat uh, and competed, I would be grateful. And um, I talk about that as well in the book, but gratefulness alone, being thankful for the opportunity to be a wrestler and to compete, uh, to train, um, I would be grateful for that. And I think that impact, that would impact um, how I would compete. I think having a disposition of gratefulness uh, and thankfulness is, uh, would, have, would have affected my performance in a positive way. I think Tom Scully would absolutely love what you say and what you've written. Uh, perhaps other shoe manufacturers would as well. But you said, if I could do it all over again, I'd put on my wrestling shoes and tie them a little slower. And um, I, I, I think it's appropriate. I insert uh, in watching wrestlers tie their shoes over the years and watching them untie them or take them off to return them to the center of the mat upon retirement signifying the end of their career. Uh, I remember as an announcer at Iowa State University uh, for the Cyclones, then coached by Cale Sanderson, uh, David Bertolino was getting ready for the final match of his life as a Cyclone at Hilton Coliseum. And he knew it. There was this, there was this great moment of, of reflection and questioning his ability. It was the final match at Hilton. And I remember, where, where is David? What's he doing to get ready? Uh, we we're at the intermission. And I went back to the locker room, and there he was in tears on the floor, struggling to put his shoes on and was doing so with great care. Uh, wrestling shoes, you know, that's really where the rubber meets the mat, so to speak. But it was that moment of, of uh, hum humility that I saw exhibited by a tremendous young man and a great wrestler. And he was questioning his ability, uh, his time at Iowa State, and it all came down to those moments of tying those shoes. And uh, I got to tell you, I shared those tears, and I shared that moment with that young man, and uh, I'll never forget it. We've actually spoken about it uh, very openly, very honestly, but it is that, uh, that great moment of honesty when and sometimes it takes a career, sometimes it takes a lifetime. But the men you've mentioned, the inspiration, uh, those that have inspired you to uh, do what you do, how you live your life with a great deal of passion uh, is evident in this book. And I appreciate you taking the time, Michael, to talk with us about it. Fans, it is uh, a unique opportunity to go inside somebody else's head and heart. Uh, the book is called The Wrestler, A Life of Passion and the Pursuit of Greatness. Our author and our guest today in the Nike Hot Seat has been Michael Fessler. The book is published by our friends at Banyan Press. Again, it's available at Amazon.com. Michael, we appreciate the time. Is there anybody on the way out you would like to thank? This is not something you do in a vacuum. Hard to do on the spot because there's so many people. Uh, but the people that have been really influential to me uh, in previous projects and this one, um, in the wrestling community, Dan Russell, um, Dan Valamont, he, he's a current competitor uh, who was able to read this material and provide uh, feedback from someone who's still competing and loves to compete and loves to support. Um, there could be plenty of others. We mentioned them already. Gary may have um, plenty, plenty of others. So, and yeah, they, they are. Uh, if, if they made it to the book, obviously, is somebody uh, somebody you recognize with the quality of their their life and and their faith as well. But Michael, we appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today. One more time, fans. This is a great gift. It's also a great gift to yourself. Don't just give it away. Take time to read it. It's called The Wrestler, A Life of Passion and the Pursuit of Greatness by Michael Fessler, who's been our guest today. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. We appreciate you watching. Thanks so much.